Our colony's second dome has been blueprinted, new colonists have arrived, and more are on the way. And this research dominance trend that we've been having for the, well, entire series, it's got to end sooner or later. We'll have to see if that happens in this episode or the next. Seriously, it has to end at some point. Hello, Legion. This is Hadrian. Thank you for being here. Let's play some more Surviving Mars Green Planet in our Red Winter series. So, as I mentioned, our next dome has been blueprinted. And we have been doing really well in research. We have an RC Explorer heading to an area right now where there are some additional research anomalies. Now, there's a meteor storm ongoing there, so that's a little bit of a dicey proposition, but going to risk it. And because, I mean, again, we're just doing really, really well research-wise. We're almost done with Logi Engineering. We're about halfway done, actually, uh, but still progressing quite nicely towards that. And once we have the ability to build larger domes, we will certainly be doing it. One thing I'm going to be paying attention to in this episode, especially once the next cold snap hits, is whether or not this subsurface heater is really necessary. When I first started using subsurface heaters and trying to protect cold colonies in my own playthroughs back in the day, I always just kind of protected the the domes in addition to the water supply. Now, I, at this point, don't recall whether that habit comes from something that I saw in the game, which we can investigate together and talk about in the comments, or just instinct that actually is not valid. As you've seen from the cold snaps we've had so far, my priority has been in protecting the water supply of the colony to keep it from freezing because as long and the power supply. Because as long as buildings stay powered, they don't freeze during a cold snap, but their power consumption, and here's the thing, their power consumption increases dramatically. So the question is, if we keep all of this operation, especially if we have one heater for two domes, if we keep all of this from freezing, is the power consumption of this subsurface heater, and I don't know the answer to this question, we'll have to figure it out together, but is the power consumption of this heater greater than the power consumption that we have from the... Uh, from the buildings that would be running in the cold if it wasn't running. So that's just something that I'm going to have to keep a close eye on. I'll go up to speed two as we begin here. We have a couple of rockets that could potentially go places. Let's stop for a moment. All right, so we have one rocket already going to analyze a planetary anomaly, waiting for the RC transport. That's right. So speaking of that, he is unloading right now, which means the... Okay, good. Are you still on a transport route? Tell you what. I've got enough metal. I'm going to stop you so that this rocket can go ahead and launch. There we go. Get gone. It's this one, actually. All right, so that's happening. And what else can we work on? We are currently waiting for resources to arrive. All right, this subsurface heater can be... I mean, they all need to be high priority, but that can be turned off. And let's go ahead and increase the surface area. Okay. It's not quite enough range to keep both domes defrosted unless I have it dead center between the two, and I don't want to have it dead center at the moment. I might move it a little later on. All right, we found a new anomaly. Good. Research anomaly very, very, very close by. So this meteor storm happening here will continue to ensure that we have lots of research to do. All right, Logi Engineering is literally seconds away from finishing. So now resources should start coming in as soon as we have our new, let's have a look. Yeah, we have to research Drone Hub and then we can have a Drone Hub out here that can bring resources to the, to the new uh, dome. Because right now that is the range of our Drone Hub. We need to have a second one probably. Research complete. Mm. Trying to think where the best spot for one would be. All right, Logi Engineering is finished. Now Drone Hub is being researched. That will take next to no time at all. We do need to have some other stuff queued up. Let's go ahead and queue up dome bioscaping. So residences in basic domes, microdomes, and barrel domes have improved comfort. Of course, we have a few other things to finish before that. But as I've just said a couple of times, we're doing really well research-wise, so. All right, so I want you to look at that and look at that. 
and evidently that meteor storm might be over, so then you can come back over here. But we will definitely have that drone hub done before long at all. There's still an argument for taking a linear chunk out of this thing to allow drones to move directly between the industrial sector and the residential sector, if you will. Nice. So we gained 41 polymers. That's not bad, actually, for a planetary anomaly. Resources-wise, you'll recall that's why we sent that particular rocket off with the RC transport. That's good news. Let's see what other planetary anomalies we can look into. All right, so we get a breakthrough if I send you to Project Commodore. I think I'm going to wait till I have a few more colonists before I do that. And new technologies here. So, yeah, I'm going to... Right now, it would take a significant chunk, roughly... How many colonists do I have right now? 23. Yeah, it would take almost 25%. 20 to 25% of my current colonist load away from their current jobs, which I just want to avoid for the time being. All right, so we're producing 1.8 rare metals per day. We need to be producing more, but it's a start. Until I have a steady production of, of electronics, I'm not going to go too crazy with the school. That's one difference that I've made in this playthrough from not only my past YouTube playthroughs, but also just my past playthroughs in general is kind of recognizing it's nice to have the school for Martian born kids but maybe wait until you can all right good more research gain there almost done with drone hub maybe wait until you can actually support the school with electronics the most valuable rare resource in the game maybe don't be too gung-ho and place that as one of your, your very first buildings when building a colony on mars i'm not saying it could be a good strategy but it could be a good strategy all right so Meanwhile, the temperature of Mars is at 3.19%. We could always start a second GHG factory. These require a lot of machine parts for maintenance, though. All right, good. Drone Hub research is complete. Let's pause for a moment while we consider where this thing's going to be. All right, so we, pro we probably just need a resource hub here. Now the question is... Where should I build this thing? I mean, I suppose having it right up against the colony is the best course of action. Again, I don't typically like to have them overlapping this much. It's better to have this kind of overlap. But this guy's a major part of our supply chain right now. So, and this is also, this area needs more drones in general, I think. Should I wait until Drone Swarm is done? I think I'm going to wait until Drone Swarm is done. Because that's not going to take any time at all. All right, so you are ready to land with the RC transport. Let's go ahead and get that taken care of. All right, good. Once this anomaly is done, that research will allow us to build a drone hub with more drones. But yeah, it's, it's always nice to have that doubled up coverage when it's in a dome heavy area because you can have a lot of drones running around helping to ensure that your colonists are protected because let me tell you colonists in surviving mars they don't look out for themselves the way you might hope that they would <laughs> you really have to babysit them not necessarily micromanage them you do in some ways but you really have to babysit Sector scanned. Ooh, we found more water Lots of water, actually, and some additional metal down there, so that's really good news. Speaking of additional metal, there's still some down here. So this is the one. Where's the... Okay, so there's the 14. Let's create a transport route and put you... That's the one, right? Okay. Just make sure I had my eye on it. My eye on it. It's kind of hard to see. Okay, so we're just giving a general order to go pick up any resources in this area, specifically metal. So it'll pick up all that and then bring it all back. Now we are starting to, it appears, hit a an upper cap with our metals. So I'm going to have to do another resource depot, but it looks like I have a good spot for one, so that's fine. Let's go ahead and throw one down. OK, 
Okay, that's actually not as perfect as I thought. Let's delete that. It'll be gone in a few seconds. It's so funny that depots will be built construct uh, instantaneously in Surviving Mars. Okay. Yeah, I kind of like the idea of having it just there on the other side of the pipeline. I'll do two more. Eventually, we'll have a full-fledged automatic depot. They can hold a lot more metal. All right, drone swarm is finished. That's good, too. Yeah, it's funny that they're built instantaneously in Surviving Mars, but then when you deconstruct them, they take five seconds to go away. So, now that we have that done, let's actually build the drone hub. And I do want to maximize the overlap as much as I can here. So we'll put this thing right up against the edge of the dome. Well, if I really wanted to maximize it, it would be there. But we don't have room. So I'm going to put it there. And they are going to have to bring a pretty good number of electronics over. It looks like they already have some on hand. That's good news. And then once this thing is online... Oh, another thing we're going to have to do, speaking of resource depots... A couple of things I like to do near domes. I mean, obviously we'll have a university, but we won't have it here because I want to have room for the passageway and the, what am I thinking, the ramp. Well, we could have it like here. That's not the worst thing. I'm going to put it here though because I might end up moving the subsurface heater if indeed we keep it there at all. So let's put that there, and then, so that's going to just be for general resources, and we'll set the desired amount to, let's say, five. And then, yeah, we, we haven't researched storages yet, but we have the option, otherwise we wouldn't see that. So that's good news. We're going to be able to research those very soon, and then have much larger storage. Now, on top of that, what else was I going to build? That's right. So we need additional storages, just basic depots, and I always like to have right outside of domes, a food depot just for larger amounts of food to be stored as needed. Okay, so now we just need three more electronics. That's actually progressing quite nicely. You can see the supply chain working to bring resources as needed between the different locations. And the drones are flying. I'm still loving the increased drone speed. This is on speed two, but it feels like speed three. How quickly they're moving. If you go to speed three, I mean, just look at that. Look at it, they're flying. Just need a few more metals and we'll be done. Looks like they're already bringing it. Oh, it's so great to see. And then as soon as, and they're already bringing new resources to the new Universal Depot, which is great. Tell you what, since we're gonna be building a lot here, let's set the desired amount to 10. Let's go a little bit more intense. I wanna make sure we have plenty of resources available there. All right, we just need a few more metals and they'll be done. We are on speed three for the time being. Research-wise, Dozer Rover is the next technology up. And there it is. There's uh, automated storage. But we have some other technologies to look at first. We can increase the command limits on the RC commander, which is always fun. Drone battery capacity increased by 50%. That's always fun as well. Being able to build Sterling generators is good too. But I think I kind of want to go farther down the terraforming Tree drones work faster on those. Discover six new planetary anomalies. Why don't we go for the planetary anomalies next? And then drones work faster on landscaping. And then we'll revisit as needed. Now we have eight rare metals at the moment. Which buildings aren't working? Do I have decommissioned protocol research yet? No, I don't. But it's right there. Let's go ahead and put that at the bottom of the queue. That way we can get rid of that old structure completely, which currently we don't have the power to do. We have just decommissioned it, or rather we have destroyed it, but decommissioning it is different from destroying it in that you can say, let's remove it completely. So we've salvaged its components, but the husk remains a broken. It's kind of annoying because it looks like it was there forever. It looks ancient, right? But we just got rid of it. It's just the graphical effect. You can see this one already starting to get a little bit dirty because we have it shut down. All right, so this drone hub is now online. 
10 drones servicing the surrounding area. We have plenty of concrete at the moment, although this deposit is not going to last us much longer. So what I'm going to go ahead and do, just to stay ahead of it, that's right, it's under production. I very often, for <laughs> especially when playing for YouTube, it's like, what category are these buildings under? Comes a little bit more easily to me when I'm playing offline, but not really. It's it's. I'm not sure why. Don't have that issue with like city skylines. Let's see. Yeah, that works as a starting location, and then we want to have cables. All right, so that's going to require some machine parts to build. We'll have to keep an eye on our machine parts production. But we will be having new colonists come down this episode, most likely. So that's something to look forward to. Just need a little bit more metal and concrete here, and it's coming in quickly. What's the desired amount here? 10? Good. That's what I wanted. Anomaly analyzed. All right. So that's more research. Have I found any more? Or is that it? Oh, that's it. Okay, well, crap. Not quite the end of our research boon yet. We're still really far ahead, but I was hoping for a few more research anomalies to be discovered as a result of those meteor showers. We still found plenty, so I suppose I shouldn't complain. But, all right, so now our transporter has a job to do. You still didn't pick up that one metal, dude. I bet I can get both of these things. Alright, gather all. And come back up here. And unload. Alright, Paradox Interactive has scanned a planetary anomaly. Good for you. Again, I don't want to get rid of a lot of my colonists' production right now by sending them on that anomaly run just yet. We want to get the second dome online, and then we'll chat about getting rid of a lot of the colonists temporarily. They'll come right back, but I would rather everything just continue to run smoothly right now so that we don't have problems. Alright, magnetic filtering is already turned on here. We do have some polymer production happening, which is good to see. Colony investment. Your attention is required. You run through the numbers again, then maybe one last time. Yes, things are finally looking up. Hard to believe that the bailout managed to steer things around so successfully. And judging by the message we received from the board, they may even be more surprised than we are. Our sponsor clearly expresses happiness with how well their investment is paying off, clearly referencing our rare metals exports, which we haven't done yet. That's hilarious. And now will offer us a better export price as a show of trust. Export price of rare metals has increased by 15%. Yay. That's great news. When we finally do send rare metals off, we can make more money for them. Sector scanned. All right, no resources found there. So yes, we will be able to increase the drone capacity by 12. So up to 20 drones will be buildable on the RC Commander. Also, now that we... I just realized, now that we can build a drone hub, you know what I can do? H hang on, how many electronics do I have? Enough. Yeah, these don't require any maintenance. So I can put a drone hub here. Let me quickly look at this. I could remove that drone hub, technically. Oh yeah, I totally could. I could put a drone hub out here. And then remove... Hang on. Let me make sure I've got this right. Yeah, I could put... Where that drone hub is sitting, I could put just a resource depot instead. Or leave the current resource depot. Yeah, I could, I could set this thing right here and just be done. And I could move on with my life and have... I mean, it doesn't really matter. Once I put the drone hub down, I'll never have to spend anything on it again because they don't require maintenance or power. So that just gives me more drones. And as I was saying, it's good to have two sets of drones maintaining an area. So maybe I'll leave them there. But I can definitely put a drone hub in the place of this guy. And I can get rid of one of the resource depots for sure. So why don't we go ahead and plan that. I'm going to throw you down there. And then that way we get our RC commander back and our ability to 
send more drones to whatever location we would like. Wow, the electronics are already in place. That was fast. So what this means is that we can get rid of this depot here as part of the supply chain. It's not needed. So it increases efficiency somewhat. Because drones from this hub can take stuff to that resource depot. Drones from this hub can take stuff from that one and take it to that one. So yeah, we have one there, one there, and then one there, and one there. That's all that matters. So you are done, sir. Great. All right. So they're going to town already, moving the resources off that. Dozer Rover research is complete. What else did that research for us? Get a one-time subsidy of one million funding from your sponsor. Huh. Okay. That's pretty nice. So we're getting some pretty nice research per soul right now, too, as a result of having researchers working in this first dome. We're almost done. We just need concrete at this point. And you know what? I can speed this up. Why don't you load concrete, please? So we haven't made too much progress after making so much in the last episode. Let's see if we can turn this around a little bit before I end this one. It's taken longer than I would have thought to get everything over here. But we have got some improvements down to our supply chain, for sure. All right, you come and unload, please. And I can now move you... Let's actually bring you over here. Why the heck not? So a few more drones to support the construction of... Uh, no, they're not low yet. They're just getting low. So I'll have to keep an eye on that. Yeah, right now we, as you can see, have fewer machine parts being produced, which makes sense. We don't. Our factory doesn't have a whole lot of people working it. Oh, hang on. You need a second shift. That'll help a little at least. There are Earthsick colonists. How? Oh, once again, these these places are not being worked. Guys, we've already done this. Okay, well, we have lots of polymers. Let me shut down the polymer factory. It's funny how that happened almost as soon as I turned on the second shift at the small machine parts factory. Oh, that selection bug is driving me nuts. There we go. All right. Got to zoom in and click on stuff. I mean, I kind of need the machine parts production. I don't want to lose that. I hate that we have three more Earthsick colonists. That's really freaking annoying. I could shut down the hydroponics farm there. Scanned. That might be a way to get people to work different jobs. Hopefully we can get rid of that earth sickness before we bring more down. Because the second dome is online now. Man, that is terrible, terrible timing. I'm actually kind of pissed off about that. It's the same problem as before. Even though we had more colonists, but we're going to lose three more. It's, it's diminishing returns, though, in the opposite direction. So it's um, increasing returns in a way, because as we bring more colonists down, those jobs are more likely to all be worked, and therefore we're less likely to lose colonists with every single load that we bring down. So maybe by the time the second rocket arrives, we can get rid of one or two, or maybe all three of those Earthsick colonists, but we're going to have to manage resource production pretty closely. Tell you what, let's go ahead and cut off the rare metals extractor too, just to encourage people to come inside and work instead. It looks like they are working the support buildings, so that's good. Let's take a look at passageway construction. We're going to build you there. And it does... Hang on. does look like we're going to have room for a ramp.
Alright, it's going to take just a little bit more concrete. There it is. New trade routes being proposed. We will send 50 concrete in exchange for 110 food. Uh, hell yeah, we will. So... Yeah, let's do that. Now, I don't have a trade... Uh, apparently it doesn't matter. Hang on. I can send Phoenix number one. So I don't need a trade um, landing launch pad? A trade pad? Offers resources for export to other colonies on Mars. Rival colonies will send trade offers only if import and export resources are set. Accessible only for rockets belonging to other colonies. Okay, so this is for... This is if they want to export stuff to us, I guess? I, I'm not sure if I see the difference. Feel free to clue me in. If you want, guys, because I'm not quite getting it. But evidently there's... I, I'm going to wait to build that until I know exactly why I need to build it. Because right now I'm pretty happy with the fact that we can just send that rocket from the normal launch pad and get lots of food back for it. That's great news. All right, so we have three Earth sick colonists at the moment. This dome is almost done. There it is. Okay, with that being done, we now have our dome, we have our first passageway, and we're going to rapidly add more infrastructure, more, obviously we're going to build more apartments, so more residences for do for uh, colonists working here. We're also going to build a, a ramp over this so that this doesn't prove to be an obstacle for drones trying to move around, but it's not too much of an obstacle right now anyway, so I don't know, we might leave it as it is, because I kind of like it without the... Um, without the ramp. But regardless, we're going to build up this dome as quickly as we can. And then, as I mentioned, now that we have the ability to build medium domes, we are going to put one down. Question is, where exactly? We can mess with this a little bit right now. So I would imagine, yep, somewhere like right there. And I kind of want to, yeah, I know it's cold terrain. Believe me, I do. So we're probably going to try and have it equidistant somewhat from these two equidistant so grown up somewhat uh somewhat equidistant from these two if you get that reference you get it if you don't you don't but that's all in the next episode to come thanks for watching if you enjoyed this one don't forget to like the video and subscribe to follow along new episodes are coming out every day at 1 p.m u.s eastern time comments are always welcome let me know what you think and i'll see you next time